Okay. There we go. This is episode number two with Dilmi. And this is the Oliver Shira show and with me, Oliver. And Dilmi and we, we just chatted a little bit before and um, we are so excited to meet again. And the positive feedback we got from our first interview, especially Dilmi. Um, yeah. <laughs> and now we want to see and, and share more of her wisdom. We don't know where it's going. <laughs> we do it. Yeah. We do it my way as usually. I'm I'm trying to listen in, trying to listen to my empathy and find out if I get the right questions. As uh, Dilmi is very confident <laughs> on that path. So welcome, Dilmi, back to episode two. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, Oliver. I'm so excited to be here because I got really good feedback uh, from the previous one because many people said it was very powerful. And uh, and some reached out to me and said that I just put out the big picture and I gave clarity on the path. And I'm really excited because I feel like, like just by listening to this, they feel like, you know, like they get clarity and they, some people said that they, like feel so good after listening to that, you know, because they feel relaxed because the whole thing is in that illusion, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I got really good feedback. And okay. thank you for giving me this opportunity, you know. You're, You're supporting well. me to spread in this message. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the least thing I can do. And I, I really realized, uh, I was wondering, how did I connect with you? It, it was over Mind Valley, and then it was over the integral. Mm. A quest mm. from uh, what's his name now? Ken Wilber. <laughs> yeah, Ken Wilber. Ken Wilber. Yes, yeah. we were both in the beta testing, I think, and you shared your part of the story in in the con in, in the in the communication app they mm. have, and I liked it. And then I connected with you, and I just had you on my Instagram mm. feed until you kind of shared it again, and. Yeah. And for the listeners which have not listened to the first episode, then I would say the best is we, we, we just recap a bit of your story, like two, three, mm -hmm. four minutes. Mm -hmm. But if you want to know more, then we, we put the link to the first episode. Of, obviously, we have it on mm -hmm. YouTube, on my channel, on YouTube, on your channel. Mm -hmm. I have it mm -hmm. on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and so on. So listen to that one first. It's the whole story of Tell Me, how mm -hmm. she actually saw that everything is an illusion and and if you're drawn mm -hmm. to this episode if you're drawn to this show it's either you you, you have listened to a few of my episodes or you have followed dilmi mm -hmm. or you put in some kind of search words right keywords and and somehow it popped up as a youtube video or um a podcast episode that means you're you're a spiritual seeker most likely or you're in the yeah in the personal growth sector and you feel like something is not right, something just doesn't feel good. You might have been working 20 years. Uh, we call it the 3D world. It sounds a bit negative, but it's easier when you get into that mm. world. It's like everything which is made up with um, you know, the materialistic world, you know, earning money, going to work, earn the money, go home, spend it um, mm. for things you think you need. <laughs> And we also talked in the first episode about, you know, relationships. We think relationships have to be a certain way. We, mm -hmm. we think vacation has to be a certain way. We think work mm -hmm. life has to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the 3D world. And if you have the feeling these things don't fit, you're very perfect here. Yeah. <laughs> and if, if you say, wow, well, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. Go to the first episode, listen yeah. to that one. And Deal me. So, yeah, try to summarize a bit your path. Could be two minutes, five minutes, whatever. So, so the people which haven't heard the first episode and say, no, no, I want to just stay here. What is your path mm -hmm. beside Eckhart Tolle and <laughs> Osho? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me tell you like briefly my story again. And uh, I born in Sri Lanka and uh, to a Buddhist family. But somehow like from the very beginning, I was like questioning everything. Uh, like why I I need to become a Buddhist just because other people, like my parents are Buddhist, I need to become a Buddhist, you know? Because from the very young age, I felt like, 
like we like as humans, whether it's a Muslim, a Christian, or a Buddhist, we born in the same way. You know, we die in the same way. We get angry in the same way. We feel love in the same way. And if you just cut yourself, the blood, red blood coming out, you know, not no one gets like a blue blood coming out or anything <laughs> like that. So, like, I realized that if this, if we, like, if we just, like, all our human beings, there's some commonality in between everyone, you know. Right now, even I'm working, like, around the world from Africa, Asia, like, Europe, America, and all of these countries. But we have this commonality, you know. And then I realized there should be a, like, how come there are, like, different fruits? There should be a one fruit for everyone in this uh, whole humanity. And then, like, that was my quest, you know. But I just came into this quest, like, 10 years back when I went through the breakup. And uh, losing all the hopes that I had about life, because I felt the whole life is a joke. Because I feel like I'm going to tell whatever I said that to men, like to the man that I, I was uh, dating, like, am I going to tell that to another man? You know, like, I mean, it's not like a dating because it was like a real relationship. And then I don't like give promises to him and all this. And then am I going to tell that to another man? And then I feel like the whole thing was a joke because I gave real promises, like genuinely in my heart. And at that time, I felt like a mini awakening. And the whole thing is a joke. If I'm going to tell this whole thing to another man again. And I don't know, at, at, at least at that time, that's how I felt. <laughs> and, uh, and after that, I was asking questions that I okay, was like, what's the meaning of life? And uh, why I'm here? What's really going on? And... Uh, like why I'm suffering and how can I go beyond this suffering? Am I the only person who is suffering here? Or oh, other people are so happy in their social media look so happy like everyone. It's so happy is that the reality or like is it the me who is suffering? So I was asking this question but somehow since getting answers from the religion somehow, so I had to figure out other people who was telling like giving me answers. So when then then only that I just uh, went into spirituality very, very deeply. I could say very intensively. Because my whole mind was like always in that spirituality, like more than anything. Like even if I went to work or do my university degree, everything, my whole like focus is always in there. And uh, because I feel like I could it's very highly likely I could get distracted. So I was always focused on here, like I gave my focus there. And I did a lot of work, meditation, inner work, listening to so many enlightened teachers around the world, like Eckhart Tolle or like Osho, you name it, everyone like around the world. So, And uh, like thousands of hours just listening to them. Because at the end, like I feel like these people have I feel like that's a trustworthy source of information that I could get on for some reason. I felt like to listen to them. Sometimes, yes, I felt like uh, I, I got provoked and got like triggers like by listening to them, but still regardless, I was listening to them. And, um, but not major things happened. Yes, I had many awakenings, but uh, not really something breakthrough happened in my life. Yeah, I got really felt like I could like feel content and uh, and at the same time I want to mention that whatever I achieved in my life like whether it's my degree with the second doctor you know whether it's my job with a good money you know like whatever I get got I felt empty inside and then for that emptiness how I how I just at least how I uh, feel that emptiness was so forth. And then I just had like developed even a binge eating. And for nine years I was suffering like because whenever I had a negative emotional stress, what I went through, I, I went and ate food for comfort. You know? And uh, I didn't know any other way to cope up with that. 
So just like that, there are other people who are addicted to like alcohol and other things. So I could understand how they go through that as well. So, so somehow that's what I use, like food as a comfort. That's what I use to like full, fill that void inside, like void inside me, the emptiness that I felt inside me. And uh, but that wasn't really working. Somehow I just did it because that's what I felt comforting at least. And somehow like everything changed when I met like one teacher. And when my brother and mother was listening to some YouTube video uh, in the living room and I wasn't so uh, open to listen to that, but I had one word which was like, he said, I'm talking the universal truth. And I'm like, what? Universal truth? And that's what I'm looking for. I, mean, I, I know there should, shouldn't be, there are many truths, there should be one truth, just like, that was my whole quest. And I was like, this resonates. And then, and then I just followed up so much this Buddhist monk. And then I somehow got co connected with him and got one-on-one -on -one sessions with him. And then, then I went through a breakthrough awakening, which I, which completely transformed my life. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, um, yeah. I remember I had to in the first episode I asked you what was the teacher's name and I yeah we, we yeah. write it down also in this show note it's it's not an easy yeah. name these Sri Lankan names yeah. or Indian names here yeah. it's not like Europeans I know. <laughs> very long and complex or let's put it that way um, mm. since we talked two weeks ago that's about two three weeks ago yeah exactly yeah. Um, yeah I've I've listened to other podcasts and there there mm. are people in the 1500, 1600 from Switzerland. I'm like, what names are those? I cannot even pronounce, but we put it in there. And I remember you just took breath. Now, when you said mm. there was the breakthrough awakening and I just mm. could feel the chills and the sadness and the, I don't know, it, it's a very difficult feeling. I just felt myself. Mm. Um, I just look at you now and I can see that you kind of get there again. And, and that's... Mm. In the pre-show, whenever I'm gonna have a pre-show <laughs> live, <laughs> whenever I'm gonna start doing my podcast live, you're gonna have a pre-show. But in I talked to you, tell me I had the feeling I did not do a good job in the first interview because I didn't know how to navigate those feelings through the first interview. Mm. I mm. felt like I wanted just to sit there and cry. Uh, I could barely keep holding my you know neutrality and 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 the space oh, i mm. felt i cannot keep the space talking to you because i could mm. feel this sadness this emptiness this this experience this shattering of reality like that mm. you you just said you were sitting there at one o'clock i i assume afternoon or was it at night it was night okay really one o'clock in the morning one thirty. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay, it was 1.30 in the morning. You were sitting there watching TV and the things oh, just disappeared, watching, right? Like from the phone, just like was watching a, a YouTube just video, just, yeah. you know, even if it's just about spirituality. And then suddenly this happened. Yeah, what happened? Yes, what happened? <laughs> okay. It was just like, Everything disappeared. At the same time, it was like I was downloading like realizations or very powerful insights to me simultaneously. I don't know the time. I don't know the time how long I was there because time was just completely like I didn't feel the time, you know, I didn't know how long I was there. I just completely, I mean, like, I don't know, honestly. And uh, and then I just felt like I woke up from a very, 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 very long sleep. And yeah, at the time of the weekend, yes, I felt I became one with everything and everyone. 
it was, I realized that if you can see Oliver, like these five fingers, you know, these five fingers, like these fingers look like separate to each other, right? Imagine these five, five fingers, these fingers start fighting with each other and then they arm each other, but then they forget that this is just one hand, you know. In underneath of this, this is just the one hand you're harming the whole thing, you know what I mean? So I realized for the first time, even though we feel separate when we are in the lower consciousness, but the highest peak of consciousness, we are just all one consciousness. Uh, I have a lot of questions here. Let me see if I mm. find the right entry point. Mm. Uh, and if I remember all the questions, I might end, I'm done. Yeah. Now you, you, you showed the hand. And, yes. and from what I learned the last one and a half to two years, I mean, physically, we know when you look at an atom and you take like the core and make it as big as a tennis ball, yeah. it's I have no idea how many meters hundreds of meters there's nothing until you get an electron mm. but we know there must be something in between so there's like energy waves we say everything is waves the sound is wave light is wave mm. feelings is wave mm. and they say even you say like oh i don't feel in vibe with them i'm not feeling in the right vibe wavelength vibration with someone so mm. you can feel that right you can feel people mm. are not on mm. the same wave mm. 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 I, I, and when you just took the fingers i couldn't help it but i had like this mental vision of all these energies which are going between all these fingers and then mm. so many ideas i mean in this few seconds you talked all these mm. Im images of chakras of med meridians of auras and mm. all these other mm. kind of things energies which are there making up our body and we know from the heart-centered institution when they measure the heart they get only 12 feet which is what is that four meters or something five meters five and a half meters they can measure the energy from the heart um but it's going much further so that means if that's five meters and I'm in a room with people, I'm connected with everyone. Yeah, it's like yeah. when you, they say they can measure like four, five and a half meters because they cannot measure it longer, but they're sure it's much further. Also, when you do meditations in group for love and, and, and affection and all these things, it's affecting the people in the city or the region. So that means if you're in a room with people and just thinking of the heart going out, you're just connected with everything. You can feel, you can measure the energy field from the heart out. Yeah. You can even measure the, the, the chakras and there's much more, yeah. which you cannot explain. So that means, yeah. and, and, and some, some teachers for many thousands of years say, you know, the aura, mm. you know, mm. intentions, basically intentions help you to set your aura, the energy field around mm. you. Mm. If you have a strong aura, that means when you when all the chakras are in place, then the aura, I think, is also in place. But if the aura mm. is not, you know, things go through, you're affected by the outside world. Mm. Uh, and I, I, I really do not know because I never had a download. So let me see what, what you will say. We are connected. We are from one consciousness. I've, I understand that here. I've not experienced mm. it, right? Mm. It's, mm. We also talked in the first episode, Eckhart Tolle says you need to experience it. You cannot learn it mentally. You need mm. to experience an awakening. You need to mm. experience the oneness, the con unconditional love. And, 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 and I've just talked with another friend of mine and she said she's separating from her husband because she was finding her mm. twin flame or whatever she mm -hmm. called it. Like this other person, mm. which was so much love there that they couldn't be separated, even though she mm. was with her husband, but all these triggers came up all these negative feelings emotions mm. all these shadows came up and they had she mm. had to work through them and um, she was growing and that's why she has to break up with her husband because she cannot live that life mm -hmm. anymore as before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then she said oliver there's just this love 
And this love cannot be described when you have not experienced it. It's not the love we humans are taught to believe in. Mm. It's not like, oh, I love you. And you have to, you know, tingling mm. feeling in the body. And because mm. there's this condition always connected. Exactly. And I can see it with my own wife. I just told with you, I'm in a, in a situation of a breakup and probably should just mention it. Whatever, it doesn't change anything. It feels just terrible for me because I feel misunderstood, mm -hmm. not accepted, um, pushed around. Mm -hmm. And that cannot be love. And, and on the other hand, I still feel mm -hmm. this love for her, but not on this mm -hmm. erotical level as we think love is, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. I do accept her and I want my wife in that case to have a good life. But still, of course, I'm a... I'm fearful, but I know there's nothing to fear of because fear will hold mm. me back. <laughs> mm. okay. And now I've been going crisscross. Jesus, my head is spinning. Uh, <laughs> so we are all connected. We are all one consciousness. And there's mm. only this true love, which is not really the love we are meant to be mm. or think it is. Mm. Oh, I don't mm. know what you take of it. I just throw it on you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly as you said you know like I felt real unconditional love at the time you know because I at, at that particular moment of the awakening whatever, I heard my brother from the next door next room you know and then for the first time, I felt so much love that I could not describe in words for him because I recognized him as myself for the first time, you know. And that for, I realized what Jesus was trying to tell, like, love thy neighbor. Because to be honest, uh, Oliver, in the past, I feel like sometimes when I hear these spiritual concepts, I try to love people, but it was a little bit artificial. There was not coming from me, you know what I mean? But here I recognize that there's nothing but myself as a realization, you know? And uh, I was in like, I felt such an unconditional love for him at that time. And for the, you know, for the whole, because I realized, oh, like everyone is just me the whole time. <laughs> now, when you, that of course brings me to the question if you could feel your brother, he was just the next room. Uh, and, yeah. you know, you do Reiki healing, you do hands on healing, you do all these different modalities mm -hmm. people found yeah. out, which came through downloads. Many say they, Reiki, I heard he, he got a download mm -hmm. and saw these images and, um, and, and signs mm -hmm. and you apparently do something on the hands and then you heal someone on distance. Yeah. Now, how? so your brother was very close and you're, you were born through the same woman. So you have this connection, energetic connection, which is very close there. Mm -hmm. But how was it with the rest of the world? Did you suddenly feel people in Africa, South America, Greenland, Europe, whatever. Did you suddenly get inputs about people from other places you never met before? Or or was it all kind of connected to your family, like cousins, fathers, grandparents, stuff like that? Did you have any of those kind of feelings as well? I was been feeling like anyone as particular at that particular moment because I was in a very peak conscious, in a higher peak of state. And I heard my brother, it wasn't even intentional, like he like was doing something and I was hearing it. And at that time, like I felt that unconditional love, you know. And uh, it was just for the whole, like I realized, oh, now I get it, that there was myself the whole time. <laughs> Whatever I do to God, there's nothing but I'm doing to myself, you know. You know what I'm saying? See? Yeah. And there was like a, real realization and I felt like I was living upside down the whole my 28 years of life you know and that was shocking because I thought the whole thing is separated I was like when I was in the university and when I was doing my 
our school and stuff, I was like competing and to become the first in the class and all this stuff. And I feel like the whole thing, like the school, like a joke. Yeah, like I wasn't seeing the reality as it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so did you see teachings of other people that crossed your path before, which tried to teach you exactly that? That we are all one? Or, uh, and you just dismissed it because you were trapped in the, you know, I have to compete, I have to be the first, I have to be the best. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't get a job, I don't yeah. get the money. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Oh, can you repeat the question again, Olive? It, it it was just um, if if you have met other people which tried to open your eyes and say hey we're all one don't 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 try to compete you don't have to be the best you don't have to mm. because we are mm. all one um, did you meet people mm. before that or no because everyone else doing like that whole competing thing and all the rest of other people are doing I never met people like. Even when I was doing the work, to be honest, there were people who came to me and said, like, I'm wasting my youth and stuff. Oh, ah, yeah, when you did the spiritual work, I mean. Yeah, yeah, and then also, like, they found that I'm weird and I'm so much into intensively in spirituality, I <laughs> should be doing that and all that. So that's what I was hearing. So I was really sometimes questioning myself, am I doing the right thing? The whole crowd was going the other way, you know, you know what I mean? Because if you see, when everyone was going to the right, I was going to the left. So I wasn't meeting that kind of people, to be honest. I wish I uh, met people like that. So, so how? And what the did, first person, yeah. What did drive you to continue that way? I mean, I see myself. I gave up. I mean, I told you before, I'm listening to spiritual shit <laughs> podcast, mm -hmm. and I. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel just so connected. I have the feeling I need to meet this mm -hmm. woman. Um, mm -hmm. She has a maternity leave now. So let's see whenever. Mm -hmm. And the last episode I listened was about astrology. You know, like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, your your zodiac signs, you know, what are, when mm -hmm. are you born and what does it mean? And then there's mm -hmm. also the Chinese. And mm -hmm. I've, I was so intrigued when I was 16 about this. But I stopped mm -hmm. doing it because people thought I'm a weirdo. Mm -hmm. You know, like a, mm. a strong man mm. with long curly mm. hair, big muscles, playing mm. football, working out, doing, mm. Mm. you know, doing math in the gymnasium. And then he comes and like, mm. oh, when are you born? What hour were you born? Oh, um, you're <laughs> whatever yeah. areas in the main. And then you're, I don't know, something else mm. in, in, the, in the second mm. house. And, oh, you like mm. to do this and that. And people are like, you're cuckoo. Mm. And I stopped and I just mm. realized, like, I just thought it was fun when I was 15, 16. Mm. And I just went away because I did not have people like that in my life. So what did keep you doing it for 10 years or eight years? Mm. Or, you know, you said 10 years mm. ago it happened. Mm. Your awakening was in 19, so mm. two, one and a half years ago. So what mm. kept you doing this seven, eight years? I mean, until mm. you found your... Buddhistic monk, which has had an awakening mm. before. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, what kept me going was like, I was constantly listening to these enlightened teachers. Like, constantly immerse myself in that. Yeah. To be honest, like, there's like, uh, Jim Rohn says, like, you are the average of five people you're hanging out with. You know, so for me, the, those five people were enlightened teachers. I could say, to be honest. Number one was Osho. And the second I could say, God, totally likewise, they were like teachers. I was constantly listening. Yeah. And uh, and also, I I saw another man from USA. He's like uh, living in Las Vegas. And then he is just, is very, very uh, young. At the same time, he's talking this truth. And then I'm like, wow, this is interesting. It's not just me. There are people like in this. Uh, there, are, I mean, that gave me that confirmation. It's not that me. There are really other people and doing it, you know. That, and that was very interesting to me to listen to him. Sometimes I was listening to him others, you know, because I felt like, wow, like he was very young too, you know. He's like five years old or something like that. 
So I was just into that and I, I was immersed myself in these people and I, that's what I was doing. I think that's what really kept me going. And when I was doing the work, like when I was stripping away myself one by one, you know, like, uh, dear me, this is not, this is like all these identities who I thought I am. Like I'm Sri Lankan, these, all these identities. When I stripped away all that, I came into a very deep not knowing of who I am. So that gave me more and more drive to find this answer. Yeah. Yeah. So and so, yeah. and this stripping away of of these different layers, you know, like mm -hmm. the onion or whatever you exactly. refer to, was that the the mini awakenings you had? Uh, like mini awakenings, I had this uh, not really that. Uh, I had like mini awakening. Uh, should I talk about like many awakenings I had? I mean, I was yeah. just thinking because you said you were peeling off yeah. different pieces of you, mm. which were not yeah. you. And then I had the feeling perhaps mm. these are these different awakenings. Like the first time the relationship where you realized you gave all the love. And I realized, wow, you know, all the promises I did to my wife. What if in half a mm. year I meet another woman and I fall heads over toes in love with her and I'm going to tell the same things. I'm like, wow, that just feels weird. <laughs> mm. right it's just yeah but, I know, are right? those the things which were or or is it something completely different uh it was like i i considered myself like i had different identities around myself which is like uh like sort of like i am a sri lankan i am a buddhist these are not the strongest you know and then I am my father's daughter, and this this person's daughter, and this this person, like you know, my mother's daughter, and uh, I'm my brother's like sister. Likewise, I had many layers I need to uh, take out. Like you know, even that could be like I mean, for me, if I take generally people, even like because I am as a vegetarian, all these other identities, you know, you're just so on to this and you think this is who you are. You know, I told you like this part, what you figure out at the end is who you are at the deepest core. And uh, so if you like, if there's a knowing of who you are in intellectual level, then how would you recognize who you are as a direct experience? So what I was doing was like, I went into these identities and I realized, okay, like, how am I sure that this is, I'm, the, I'm a Sri Lankan, you know? I went into that and I just really come into a not knowing, I'm not sure that I'm Sri Lankan. You know what I mean? It's only like, <laughs> I just started asking, okay, but okay, I can't remember that I born into this country, you know? Maybe I born in some other, maybe I born in, Switzerland and I came in here, like, but I don't, I can't remember why. Like, I coming out from me, from my mother to Sri Lanka, you know, that's the truth. So I was, I was like, really asking, even the people say this obvious stuff, like, I am this person's daughter, you know, my mother's daughter, my father's daughter. Even the obvious stuff like that, I started questioning. Do I really know for that? And what if I was mixed up with someone else? You know what I mean? This could totally happen. So that's the thing. Whenever you think you know who you are, then how would you figure out like what thing you don't need to know who you are? Right? So then how would you figure out who you are then? Because you think you already know who you are in intellectual level. So what I do, what I did is I was shattering all that one by one. Yes. You know? And that was very, very uh, painful, to be honest. Oliver, like when I was doing my mother's daughter, I was crying. I, because that's a very, that's a real identity I had with my mother. And I was like, I was like, I was scared. I feel like I don't know who I am anymore. That's what I'm telling you, that you need to literally die in order to figure out who you are, because this I who you think you are that I is just a complete conception you created for yourself. Yeah, the I am this and that. Yes. 
podcast. Yeah. Um, uh, wow, this is so complicated. Um, I mean, it's so simple and so it's complicated. It's very simple. No, no. It's, but at it, the same time, yeah. It, 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 it's very complicated because of all our conditioning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, and that's exactly where I come into. It's like if someone comes and says, wow, Jesus, Oliver has been talking weirdo stuff before with all the heart and connecting and the fingers and energies in between. I'm losing you guys. Uh, please give me some something to hold on. I'm like, I've, I'm doing... And I'm doing the five-day Tony Robbins and Dean Garcia. So right now, mm. so you know, it's 2021, mm. May, whatever, 14th today. And so it's a five-day course. They do it for free. There's, they say 500,000 people are watching it live. And, you know, in all these kind of personal improvement things, it's about shattering mm. some identities, limiting beliefs, mm. you know, removing limiting beliefs or shatter them or just ignore mm. them and replace them with other mm. things. And mm. this is so interconnected with what you say now. It's exactly... Mm. These limiting beliefs are, I'm a Sri Lankan, and because I'm a Sri Lankan, I cannot be accepted in Switzerland. Or whatever, mm. right? Now, mm. just to take mm. those things, okay. because I'm Swiss and you're from mm. Sri Lanka. Because mm. I'm a woman, I cannot climb up Kilimanjaro alone mm. in underpants. Mm. I have mm. no idea if you want to go do that in underpants. Mm. But there's Wim Hof, right? He's climbing up in his boots yeah. and swimming pants on yeah. top of the biggest mountains. Um, and, and I think these people which achieve greatness in life, they are actually able to remove layers like you do mm. in mm. whatever way they do it. And, and I love mm. your explanation here. Like, am I sure that I've been born in Sri Lanka? Who knows? And so this is one thing is like this personal improvement, get greatness done, you know, school of greatness and so on and so forth, mm. removing these limiting beliefs because they are connected with mm. I am, right? Mm. On, and then replace it with something else. But on the other hand, listening to you, I have the feeling like you remove all of those and replace it with nothing because you're everything, right? So I am, I'm not my mm. mind, I'm not my mm. body. That's mm. what Satguru mm. says a lot. Mm. Um, exactly. you can do it for 10 minutes you can go and find Satguru online YouTube and I have no idea how he calls that meditation anymore mm. but he basically mm. just repeats I'm not the body I'm not the mind I'm not the body mm. I'm not the mind um, mm. you have a body you have a mind so that's another mm. part and then to get mm. even more complicated that's why I say it's so complicated in my head <laughs> um Oh, shit, where is it now? It just flew away. It didn't want to get out. It just was in my head and now it doesn't want to go. Um, it's... Oh, fuck. Where did it go? It was just <laughs> there. It was just there. It's fine. It just out. You know, it's all this one. <laughs> it's all from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... um. Yeah, in the end, we are all one consciousness. Back you to said, to... like, uh, Sadhguru is doing this, uh, I'm not my mind, I'm not my body. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly, yeah. and and um, and replacing all, all the limiting beliefs and all that stuff. Mm. Uh, shall, I, shall I add one yeah. thing for that? Yes, let's go, please. Yeah. I interviewed you. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that that's very interesting what that Sadhguru said, I'm not my mind and I'm not my body. You know, when I was stripping away, I just came into a point which I felt like I am my body and I am my mind. These were two big points which I had like the real obstacles which I had to like go, go over. You know, that was not so easy. I literally felt like I am my body and I am my mind. Okay. I mean, let me tell you how I did, like, went beyond that, you know. That's a good point, like what he said, that, like, chanting again and again, because it just goes to your subconscious when you're, like, telling something over and over again. You can use another one, it's a life is a dream, you know. It's another one. And uh, and then, like, like, how I realized this myself is I am my, I'm not my body. 
one day, I mean, let me tell you, this is a mini awakening I had, okay? One day, some years back, I was meditating by myself at about 11 p.m., which is very, uh, very silent at night time. And no one was there, everyone has gone to sleep. I was so silent. And I was meditating. Like, to be honest, I didn't have like a rigid way of, oh, this is my meditation. So at that time, I chose to listen to the silence. <laughs> okay. Because I didn't know what to do. So I was like, oh, the, there's like a soothing feeling I had because everything was so silent. So I was listening to the silence. And all of a when I was doing that, I came into a very intense, like I was very deep in the meditation. And then suddenly, I didn't feel my body. Literally, I didn't feel anything in my body. And I could see that my mind was going crazy because like it was getting panicky. But I just completely didn't feel anything inside my body. I was like, there's nothing in my body. At that particular moment, Oliver, I had a realization, ah, I'm not my body. You know? Because you experienced it. You did not experience. force your mind. You had to experience it. Like Eckhart Tolle says, yes. you need to experience. Mm. You cannot mm. learn. Yeah. And how did you get the, I'm not my mind? Is that the big awakening? Okay. Was Okay, and then, then the next one. I am not my mind. Okay, this is a very big, this is like the biggest one because you literally feel like you are the mind. You feel like this in that talk is yourself. Okay. For this, I'm going to take an example from a Catholic life. Okay. And if you can remember, he was like, he was sharing his story and uh, he was in a very depressive, suicidal time period in his life. And, uh, and that was like also, I think, night time, I think. And, uh, and then he couldn't stand his mind anymore because like it was constant negative thoughts. Because imagine someone wants to suicide himself, like completely very negative. And then suddenly he had a thought coming into his mind, I can't stand myself anymore. Okay, and then he had another one thought coming up again. If I can't stand like myself, am I one or two? And then this made him detach from his mind, from his consciousness. And at that particular moment, he realized he's not his mind. He's the witness behind, you know? Uh, he talks and, about and, the witness behind. Yeah, yeah. It's so difficult. Yeah. And and in my awakening, let me take now, like, because for him, it has, like, it has happened out of nowhere. I'm so lucky, but for me, that is not <laughs> how it happened. <laughs> I had to work uh, for it. So anyway, it's fine. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, for me, at the awakening, like at that particular awakening, I could say I got detached from my mind, from the consciousness. You know, that's why, like I told you, like after I, after the awakening, I was very, very in the now without even trying. So that's like that particular thing happened in my awakening, I could say. Yeah, so, so it was that. Because, yeah, because I could, I, I, I realized. That was a complete no mind state I went through the awakening. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so a, it's complete, a presence. No yeah. Yeah. Com complete presence. Yeah. Complete presence, complete no mind state. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's of course very scary. I mean, especially when you say when mm. you were I'm not my body. Um and again I have multiple you know when you see all my 10 fingers multiple ways of asking <laughs> and continuing yeah. that talk um <laughs> oh, which one should i take let, let, let's take the 
let's go chrono chronologically with I'm not the body. You were not feeling the body at all. And then, of course, I come into my mind with astral projection, with lucid dreaming, and, mm. and, and, and other things. Like there's also the, I don't know if you know, these um, floating tanks. I don't know if they're called like that. But where you're in complete darkness, you have a little light, mm. you kind of lay on a mattress in water somehow. I so know you... that. I think it, I, I don't know what to call it, something deprived tanks. Or like... Yeah, deprived sensory tanks, uh, floating yeah, tanks, exactly. where, where you have no sound, you have no vision, mm. and mm. You, your body kind of floats. Mm. I, I guess that's how some people can try to get there. Um, mm -hmm. but then the question for me is, did, did you ever do lucid dreaming or astral traveling? So you get out of the body and you just fly around and you visit whatever you want on the planet. And some people go through the universe and come back. Did you ever try something like that? Uh, no, not really. Actually, <laughs> I haven't tried. I, I mean, yes, I did the lucid dreaming press in the mind valley for some days, but, uh, Actually, that really uh, didn't even happen to me, but uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't tried any of those uh, earlier. So, so, so then, of course, there's another question I had there as well. Like, yeah. what is the superpower after the awakening? I mean, one thing is the experience and knowing. I'm not that mind. I'm not the body. I'm not any of this. Well, what else did you get out of it? Is it uh, super peace? Is it... The, you can be in, in, in the present all the time. What are the gifts you got from the hard work you did? Mm. I could say I transcended my suffering. And that's the biggest. And then the next thing is I realize who I am at the deepest core. And I would like to opt out that part because I normally don't tell that in public, you know, uh, because what I realized as who I am, you know, I guess, uh, honestly, I don't want to share that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so, yeah. And then at the same time, I was like in the past, to be honest, only when I was reading a card, I was trying to practice being in the now. You know, sometimes I, I remember I struggle so much to be in the now. Okay. Like I, I listen to a cartoon and he says, Oh, yeah, like be in the body. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then I go to my lecture and then I'm like, Okay, I listen to the humming of the AC. And then I, I'm, I'm like, like trying to be in the now by listening to the humming of the AC and then I try to listen to the lecture and then I have lost the whole lecture and uh, and then you know sometimes I try to listen to someone while feeling my feet and then I forget and then I can't really respond to the other person because I was trying to like feel my feet at the same time trying to talk. There was a struggle because I was trying things for myself, you know, because he was telling like do that. But for some reason that wasn't so effortless. But then after the awakening, I was in the now without me doing anything. It's completely effortless. Yeah, I can I can see that because as I said before, I did had some experiences after the last talk with, with crystals where he looked at me and another girl which can feel energies and of course, I've experienced me for 10 days, not the one with crystals, he just came. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the feedback is always the same, like, oh, you're not grounded uh, and you have too many thoughts. And and the funny thing is a side note in this crystal, having crystals on the seven chakras, mm -hmm. the one on the throat and the one on the third eye, just I felt the crystal melting on my skin, which was very interesting. Um, it gave a nice warm feelings, but those and the heart apparently were okay, but but definitely my root and my crown chakra completely upside down. So then it's very mm. hard for me to be in the present. And that's, from, mm. I, I, he said, I'm like standing on the tip of, of, of a triangle on my root chakra and, mm. and, and mm. the crown chakra was just like, the, 
the the pendula he was holding in the hand he didn't move the finger at mm. all it the mm. pendula went so mm. high he had to lift his elbow not to hit the mm. pendula and i'm like wow so trying to do Eckhart Tolle from that point mm. where i am it's super difficult Mm. because i'm always trying to balance several things like you say mm. okay like i ground my feet i feel like roots coming through my feet and mm. they go mm. so deep mm. in the ground and someone is talking like mm. okay and then and i listen to the birds and i listen to the talks i'm i'm here and now yeah. and then of course in nowhere yeah. but everywhere mm. <laughs> so experience that. That. <laughs> exactly so, so I, I just mentioned this also for the people listening, which are still here, and they're like, whoa, there's mm. a lot going on. This is what happens. And, and I think I'm trying too much. That's why the root, the crown chakra is out of place. And perhaps my root is just because of the relationship I'm in. As I said, my wife is not a bad person. It's just the energies are wrong. The boundary setting is not working mm. from her, from me. There's a lot of mirroring between each other. Like mm. I get triggered what mm. she says. She gets triggered a lot with me. Mm. Mm. I can see mm. I'm a few steps further on some places where she's a few steps mm. ahead of me. So let's mm. see what happens for me going into the unknown if I feel more my grounding. Um, and now I also remember what I wanted to say before, as you said. <laughs> yeah. Don't think too much. Yeah. yeah the thing about knowing who you are i am this and i am that i'm the daughter i'm mm. the brother i'm mm. the sister i'm whatever mm. it's like i just heard in another podcast the spiritual shit this one lady was sharing her story of awakening getting mm. you know clear mm. voyant and, and stuff like that and she said her four-year-old son or back then four-year-old son one morning looked at at her and said why did you marry that man and he's like, hey, that's your father. Like, yeah, but we should be married. And we were married before. It's kind of like, you know, if 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 we have the, you know, we come back and back into this in this world to experience new mm. new mm. things. That means mm. I've been told I've been a woman and I've been a man, I've been single, um, all these things. Then mm. from that perspective, like what you are like Sri Lankan now, or you were born in Sri Lanka, you were born to this mm. woman and that man. But 10 lives ago, you might have been the brother and the mother, you know, y your father might have mm. been your, your, your daughter <laughs> and your mom might have been your brother. Right. So. Exactly. I, I right. Mm -hmm. so, or, or you might have been a tree. So that's another question I had, like when you could feel your brother, how was it with other living things? trees animals landscape gaia mm. you know mother earth mm. do you feel anything there yeah exactly uh like one time i i can remember one uh like something from my life you know one time i was in the bathroom and i was just like just throwing something out you know like i think it's just uh so i don't know what was it like I was just throwing something, okay? And uh, and then I felt so bad doing that. And then I just went and just took it up and then kept it in the right way. You know, at that particular time, I felt like, you know, I mean, the awakening I had at that time, I didn't say I became everything. And I said everyone, like everything and everyone. You know, I, I literally realized the whole thing, you know, the living, non-living, everything I began with, you know. So at that time, that's why I felt bad to throw that. And then I just kept it like really in a nice way. So I felt bad. So since then, are you interacting differently with nature and things? I mean, the Japanese people I've heard have a god for everything you know the microphone there's a god for my microphone mm. there's a god mm. for everything so they mm. they have gods everywhere so they, they have a very special way so how is it for you mm. since the awakening yeah i think that's that's so true like you know everyone is a god like that's what what you like if you see that uh, many people tell each other the namaste 
what's for me means that I bow down the divine within me. You know? So because everything is just God. And it, if you see like what you mean by Buddha, it's a vacant one. Like if you, see, if you see that God, God, like everyone has this God seed within themselves. So question is, when you're going to awaken that seed within yourself? You know, otherwise, why we are like bowing down and saying that I bow down to the divine within you? Because we already tell each other that I know that there's divine within you. Then why not awaken that? That's what I did. And I know that if I can do it, then everyone else can do it. Yeah, that's true. But but what? A... Yeah, now I'm, I'm I'm looking a bit. What else I had? Um, so I I know in the first interview we we talked. Mm. You you said you didn't really share your story mm -hmm. for one year. And then mm -hmm. it was the integral. That's why you shared the first time. Mm -hmm. You got the good feedback. Mm -hmm. You started sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and now you're you're present with people, trying to help them by being mm -hmm. there for them. And 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 when I see that, I had some discussions with my my circle of people, which are awakened or on the way of being awakened, or whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. mini awakenings. I mm -hmm. think I had just a mm -hmm. lot of mini awakenings, nothing mm -hmm. major. And sometimes I'm like, yeah. ah, come on. <laughs> um, and, and, and then the feedback is like, you know, uh, we have Deepak Chopra, for example. He has been writing a lot of these books. Mm. Uh, mm. And some of the people say, yeah, but he's not doing it himself. It's just copied and someone else is writing for him. Mm. And Eckhart Tolle sounds very much, he's really writing from himself. How is it for mm. you if you would write a book or or, or teach to you know i mean where's the information coming from would it be hard for you to to take information from these different spiritual teachers you have because you're very influenced after eight nine ten years of reading mm -hmm. all these things mm -hmm. or do you mm -hmm. say it doesn't matter because we are all one anyway and i take mm -hmm. what resonates with you so, so how do you take that so how do i teach people yeah how, how would you how would you yeah. sorry how would you that, sorry, my question was not clear. <laughs> I can see yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> you know, some people have a problem reading Deepak Chopra because they say, yeah, but it's mm. nothing new. He's he's taking information from I Buddha. I feel like this, the depth is not there. You know, when I, I also read Deepak Chopra, I feel like the depth is not there. Like, you know, so when I, like if you take Eckhart Tolle, when I listen to that, like, I feel like he's talking what he's already experiencing. I just feel it. I don't know how. I and mean, if you ask how I feel it, I don't know how. And then the second thing, if I, when I read Osho, I'm like, wow, there's so much depth in this. Not normal people can say this. Okay. You know? I can say that it's not some so intellectual, technical word types. It's just so simple. Because if you have already walked the path, Oliver, it's very simple. You know, to be honest, when I when I walked, I realized this. So I was like, Shh, this is so simple. How come everyone not get this? You know, I was like, I wanted to scream, like, like you know. And then when I tell that to my teacher, he said, this excitement will just go away with time. You know. That's how everyone feels when you realize it's in the beginning of this, you know. And uh, I mean, it's so simple. It's just so simple because of our condition, it's just so Overdue. hidden and not like it's like, it's like I could take this as an example, okay? Like, imagine the fish start asking the question, like, what's water? You know, where's the water? Or question like that. But the fish doesn't know the fish is already in the water. So he can't really figure that out. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's what's happening to us too. We're sitting on our environment. Uh, okay, so I understand you're right. So the people which had like Osho and Eckhart Tolle, which had this experience, they write in very mm -hmm. simple words. 
mm-hmm. and and uh, but it's very triggering for people and especially for you mm-hmm. Osho was very triggering for me Eckhart Tolle was mm-hmm. uncomfortable and and when you then read something from Deepak Chopra he's using too much technical terms I think he's also an engineer sort of intellectual you know it's like intellectual it's not I don't know I didn't resonate with that so I just moved out to other things Okay, so so you think it's more like from there. So if you would write a book, I don't know if you plan to do so eventually, perhaps, um, it would be more in the direction of Osho, Eckhart Tolle. But it, where would you take the information from? Would it just be um, your experience or would you try to, to combine things you have learned? My experience, you know, and at the same time, I would like to live on and I have like got influence so much from uh, one person is Osho. So I could take uh, examples from other people who have I read as well. But mostly from my experience only because I realized that people resonate with my story mostly, you know, so that's like the most uh, authentic for me to do. So yeah. And, and, and how to help to awaken or how to help to to grow as a person what is the best way what is the best way to realize this truth (laughs) yeah well let's say you going back 10 or 12 years right um how would you teach yourself what what would you Mm. how would you help yourself to to awaken or would you just say whatever just go your path and (laughs) <laughs> You'll get there. <laughs> and no, I I would comfort. Uh, I would first of all, I would say, just relax, really. Just completely relax, you know. You have done so much, you know. I, I first of all, I want to appreciate you. You've done so much in your life. I want to acknowledge first, like what. This is my younger self. And comfort her because I had so much self-love issues because I thought I'm not good enough. I need to prove myself to people. So I feel like there were people who were looking down on me. And like, if you take my degree, how I got the best results in the island and got into uh, with the full scholarship, uh, best management faculty in Sri Lanka, was pure coming from proving people. You know, the whole drive is coming to prove people. And I'm going to tell her, like, you don't need to prove anyone, which is amazing. You know? Mm. And just take it easy. This is... And, and the next thing I would tell her is each time you want an answer, it will come to you. You don't need to stress so much in your life, you know? Because the right book came to me, the right teacher appeared in me. I mean, if you have heard the story, like I heard the saying, which says, like, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And then there's another part to it. When the student is really ready, the teacher disappears. Have you heard that part? No, I didn't get that. I mean, I can I can explain that part, you know, because when I went like through the awakening, when I realized this truth, I was like, oh, I'm going to talk to my teacher tomorrow. And then he disappeared. So, uh, what, he's, he's gone? He's away? It's, like, it's just like I told you the whole thing disappeared. Just like that, I was like, I, I, I saw that I, I get a thought coming into myself saying, yeah. But, oh, I want to talk to my teacher, you know, and then like suddenly he disappeared. That's what the, that other part is, you know. Now only I understand that part, you know, after going through the awakening, when the student is really ready, the teacher disappears, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's of course then... That's a very, very deep, uh, <laughs> Oliver, just what I shared. Just forget it. No, no, no. I, I, I put it I put it somewhere <laughs> very, in the box. very, very deep. Yeah. I, I'll keep it somewhere, deep. you know, somewhere. Uh, yeah. I mean, 
the other thing is also where are our thoughts, where are our memories, where are our emotions? Are they up here? Are they here? Are they here? Or are they around us? I mean, there's there's people which had an awakening and they just saw themselves as this big energy body, you know, this big <laughs> light crown, which is whatever, 10, 12 meters above them, right? It's like, and some people say, you know, we have 12 or 15 chakras and they go up 100 meter above you. Mm. And I say, yeah, but that's all still within our energy body, within our soul. Mm. And it's so crazy. And they, they saw these things. So let's see, I take what you said, this deep thing, I'm not putting it down, I'm putting it up yeah. into, into my sphere and whenever I'm ready, let's let's put the intention. Whenever I'm ready, I will remember what you said. And then mm. let's see what happens. I might have exactly. a really weird experience <laughs> uh, yeah. coming out of that. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm taking notes and I have all these questions. I'm like, uh, I don't know how to get a red thread through all these ideas because it feels, everything feels just flying mm. um but one one big question before i think we have to close down for today because also my kids mm. are alone with me and unfortunately they listened or watch tv before i wanted them i wanted to do stuff so throw them in front of the tv so they can s calm down while i'm talking to you but you know you cannot plan kids right so yeah i know that. <laughs> they have to do the things they have to but i can hear they're playing upstairs um we're gonna make some desserts afterwards very interesting for people listening to that in 10 years <laughs> perhaps my own kids who knows um now that you had this great awakening and i mm -hmm. hope we added some extra information for the people which listened to the first episode when you had this great awakening for some people i heard it's like we come down to this life to remember who we are. And when we remember, we basically achieved our goal and then we die. Um, you know, we disappear. Um, what is, did you get any downloads? What is the next step? Was the awakening for you to actually be able to hold space for others? Or what do we have the feeling is your next step? Now you, you worked so hard and then you had this mm. Mm. you're asking me what's my next step or oh, do, do you know what is your next step or do you do you have the feeling okay you're you're calling why you're experiencing this life in the virtual reality in the matrix mm. in your head in your consciousness mm. <laughs> whatever it is mm. um, do you feel it what it what's going to be now that you have taken the first big step well, I think, like, to be honest, like, I didn't know what I would do next when I awoke. Like, I was like, now what? What would I do in my life now? Like, I know the whole thing is a joke, and the whole thing is an illusion. And even to teach this, like, if you take any action, it's just another joke, if you take. <laughs> even if I teach this to someone else, you know? First, but at least I chose that because I, it's not because it's so important, you know, but I feel like that's a calling, like, you know, that I feel like whenever people are suffering, when I see people are suffering, uh, Oliver, I feel like it, I can't keep this message just to myself and just stay, you know. To be honest, when I, like, in the beginning, I felt like I was, like, I had to like go beyond the suffering of my suffering. That's what I was like trying to do. And then now I feel like, now I see other people suffering so much even more than before. So now I feel like now I'm supporting others to uh, go beyond this suffering. You know, that's, that's my next, like that's what I'm doing already. And I don't know what I would do in the future. Uh, this is all I know, you know, so yeah. Yeah, but that's who knows five years ten years we can always change but but you're you seem to be f um filled with more energy and life than you have been before yes i think i was i i am like so alive you know 
and which is even the work that I do is like sometimes like I give my uh, clients like unlimited access to myself and they are like uh, they are like sometimes they ask me like are they were both thinking that should I send the message to her on weekends you know for me like it doesn't matter you know I'm not so like caught up with this time sometimes I don't even know what the day is to be very honest I don't know what the day is like it is the time is just another illusion and just like space and everything yeah <laughs> Yeah, it, that's, uh, I mean, while you were talking, I just fo- saw myself sitting next to you and, and we do the same interview in, in person with some cameras yeah. and lights and a uh, nice setting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, some nice sunset, I don't know. Um, or perhaps around the world going around. And, and I think, uh, I don't know what, what my calling is, right? Um, because mm-hmm. I do this this quest. And for t- mm. 10 years, I'm like, who is coming to me? What for? Nothing. They're just annoyed. I talk so much. And I've been told all the time I'm talking too much and I have no story. And I can see myself a little bit while I have to interview with you because I have all these ideas and, um, and I feel mm. there's no structure uh, in my head, but I'm sure there must be because we got this really great feedback from the first interview. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. So then I'm like, what is it? I mean, I just love to talk to people. And I want to mm. learn, but I also want to help, right? I, I'm. Mm. It, it sounds perhaps very egoistic that I'm talking to you. Ah, oh, so I have another interesting person that looks good on my mm. podcast. Mm. It's like, yeah, no, mm. but that's not that. I want to have a lot of audience because I want the guests I have to get that chance to spread their words to so many people mm. as possible. Mm. Need to hear yeah. it. So that's kind of like my thing at the moment. Uh, to help you I guys. I feel like, like, you know, you supported me to touch uh, many people's lives, you know, I, I mean, I got feedback by people, you know, and I'm very grateful for doing that, uh, Oliver, you know. Yes. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, um, now there might be only 50 people, but in five years, who knows? We might have reached a I few know, thousand. Right. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> And, and you're going to have a long beard and a turban on the head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope not, because in this life, you're a woman. That would look weird. We are, yeah, exactly, right? I, I have not seen dwarfs living on the planet, but who knows if we had dwarfs once. And there the women also had beards, I have heard. <laughs> so, but yeah. uh, the a last thing before we close down, uh, which I had in the beginning, I took notes what I could ask. Mini awakening was one thing, you know, uh, and you said you felt empty and you started binge eating. Others are taking alcohol. Mm-hmm. I can see my wife mm-hmm. not going to bed at 10, watching movies, mm-hmm. drinking and eating chips. And that's definitely filling up the mm-hmm. void, filling up emotions. Um, mm-hmm. How can someone, what would be your advice or call to action or something in that direction? For people which say, okay, I feel empty. I feel this emptiness with overworking, alcohol, eating, whatever it is, right? Sex, mm. porn for man. Mm. Uh, how can I feel this mm. emptiness to be full? Do you have any tips? Yeah, I, the number one thing is like, Oliver, like what I realized is when I was binge eating, what I was doing is whenever I felt stressed, I go and start eating chips. You know, I started going and eating ice cream and all these type of food. But what I was trying to do is I was avoiding those emotions because I felt really bad whenever I felt that emotion. So now what I would suggest you to do is don't try to avoid any of those emotions. They are there for a reason, you know, and don't try to resist these emotions and be with the witness and just be with the emotion, yeah. I mean, I know that you will say, oh, it's very uncomfortable to do that. But if you do that, you will understand that, like, your being cheated will be going away from your life and just, just, just be with the emotion. Huh. You know, don't try to resist the emotion, just be with it. Yeah. 
that was also my teaching I got with yeah. conscious, no, what was it? Metacognitive training. Yeah. Be with the emotions, absorb them, don't push them away. I mean, there's so many different teachings which say the same, and especially Eckhart Tolle. I haven't written or heard Osho. I know mm. him, mm. but Eckhart Tolle says mm. the same, right? Uh, to mm. some degree. Be the observer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And another point I can add to that, and uh, like imagine whenever you're taking the chips, okay, you do it with a very slow motion. <laughs> very, very mindful. You know, take the chips out and start eating very one by one. Just feel eating it very mindfully. You know. <laughs> That's yeah. another. If you're like, if you're like smoking cigarettes, like take your packet of cigarettes and then do it in a very mindful way. You know. What do you think is the experience people have doing it that way? Like in, uh, I, I, like if they do it really well, this thing, I think it will go away in three weeks. This whole addiction. Yeah, if they really practice that. Yeah. Just and what, what we try to do is we try to resist these emotions because they feel bad. To feel these emotions are very bad. What you try to do is it's good to resist it and eat some chips because it feels good at, at least. <laughs> yes, it does. You know what I mean? Yeah. All, all these cookies, these really nice cookies. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Okay. But that's, that's great. I, I thank you so much for your time. And I just love to talk to you. Uh, you have this really calm energy around you. I don't know how you were two years ago before you had this great oh, yeah. awakening. <laughs> you wouldn't like it much. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> So that, that could be interesting yeah. to have your, your family or your best friends once sitting there and just <laughs> like, wow, this is this is like night and day, uh, yeah. probably. I know, right? Yeah. It, I, can, I can imagine just for myself, the fire must have been burning a lot. If you said you're chief, uh, you know, being number one in, in the school and all these things, mm, there must have been mm, a lot of mm. fire which must mm. have been burning in any mm. situation, whatever you did, going mm. swimming, mm. cooking, sleeping. Mm. 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 How did you actually sleep when you were on fire? Yeah, like that's, I could sleep some days, like because my mind is like, woo, you know? And then when your mind is so active, you can't sleep. To be honest, like after the awakening, I sleep like a baby, like I don't know, like gone <laughs> it's just like five minutes or ten minutes and before you had like two three hours sometimes or, or no sleep at all like like I just, my mind is too active uh, uh oliver you know to be very honest like sometimes i go to uh just like uh, what uh ricard Tolle said i couldn't stand my mind i couldn't stand myself whatever it seems like talking 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 sometimes i that's why I told you sometimes I go to a lecture. I don't hear anything that the lecturer says. What I hear is my inner talk. And it's too much in my mind. I couldn't stand it. If someone is like living in their mind all the time, then they can resonate with what I'm saying because that's the hell. That's <laughs> hell. I know. <laughs> I know. That's not an easy place to be. The thing is, people think that mind is so important and they need to listen to it. You know? They think that this is so important, I need to listen to it. But they don't know that the mind is just repeating, the past repeating itself. You know, that's what I did. Like, I was going through the mind and just going inside my mind and realizing everything about I understand the nature of my mind. And that's how I got the detachment, you know? <laughs> yeah. There we go. So that's like, 
very important message here at the end. So for everyone which mm -hmm. listened that far, they they got even deeper now. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? It's going deep and deeper. <laughs> so um, yeah, okay. Where can people reach out? I mean, you're on Instagram a lot. You mm -hmm. have a web page and a yeah. YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Is there anything yeah. else? Mm, I have my book. You know, they can read my book called Life is a Dream by Dilby Mahadura if you uh, search it on Amazon. And uh, so, yeah. And where else they can reach to me? Yes, I think that's it, yeah. And of Instagram course, me seven in Lake. <laughs> C I L M I seven in Lake. Yes. Yes, you have um, this special numbering from Dilmi. And um the YouTube, but I'll put everything in the show notes. So oh, yeah, people yeah. don't have to worry. And um also on the YouTube channel last time I put some yeah. notes of and I would like to suggest like listeners come and tell me like you know that it was useful because I feel like that's such an encouragement for us to do this work and for me to go on you know, podcasts and talk this work because when I see this is helping so many people it's like I put more attention to it and I do even more you know so just tell your feedback give us the feedback you know and it's very helpful yeah Yes, and and when we are there, negative and positive. What I'm open to negative as yeah. as well, you know. Yes, I'm it's, very it's, open. Yeah, it, it as negative. Uh, I guess you mean as well. It's like more like how we can improve it, um, better structure beforehand or yeah, whatever because, it is. Uh, to be honest, Oliver, there are people who get triggered with this whatever we are talking. You know, so there could be like that uh, coming our way too. You know, so it's. I'm very really open to it. I, yeah. I have. I already expect that. Yeah. <laughs> I start to see it more and more. Uh, I knew it intellectually, but I start to see mm. it really much with my kids, with my wife, especially. I mm. see it at work that people just get triggered by things you say. And mm. the better, the more I realize that, the better I can put my borders, my boundaries around myself mm -hmm. in, in uh, enrich or strengthen my aura to say so it's not mm -hmm. getting so close into me um it's also braving the wilderness um Brene brown writes about these things you know walking the mm -hmm. path not so many people take mm -hmm. i think she also mm -hmm. had awakening mm -hmm. if you go deeper mm -hmm. um it's actually something to strengthen yourself because you realize mm -hmm. hey you're more authentic mm -hmm. with yourself and these mm -hmm. triggers are normally in my experience things that show that you're not living your authentic self mm -hmm. that you live according exactly. to someone's dreams mm -hmm. and that's why you get triggered because it mm -hmm. has to be a certain way right mm -hmm. uh, you cannot eat the soup with a with a what do you call it uh, oh. uh yeah a straw yeah sucre i yeah. have too many languages in my head a straw mm. right you cannot yeah. eat the soup with a straw that's why not mm. <laughs> who says so you can even try to take a fork but it takes a long time <laughs> so but with that anyone who's triggered dilmi told yeah. you reach out to us send a voice message on wwanchor point fm slash shirach s c h i r a c h c h let me figure out how i can send you a direct link so you can send mm -hmm. a voice message go to dilmi's instagram go to my instagram i'm working on making a more presence there so it's easier mm -hmm. to share all the great mm -hmm. knowledge i have from people like dilmi and other people mm -hmm. and yes mm -hmm. i love feedback or send other guests to us, right? Who knows if we want want to mm. make like a group call with different people which have similar experiences? That could exactly. be interesting. I guess Dilmi would be yeah. open to talk to some other people which had uh, ego death of course. awakening. Yeah, I would love to meet them actually. Yeah, I mean it's it's different. I than... met like two people. You met two people? Just two people, like so far. My teacher and another. Uh, my coach in the past, you know, who is my NLP coach. Yeah. Oh, she was as well. Okay. Mm. 
We, we talked about her in the first episode. I've been talking to people with, yeah, I've been talking to people with near death experience. So people which died mm. and came back. And the message mm. from them is sim, it's, it's not the same. It's quite different, but it's still mm. the same. Love yourself, accept yourself. Don't mm. race through life. Mm. Life is for mm. you. Enjoy it and, and okay. be kind to yourself. And um, mm. love is the answer to most of any problems <laughs> with that uh i'll press this button and say thank you for the listeners to make it that far goodbye <laughs>